Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the dedicated pipeline that allows you to export your character from Character Creator 3 directly into Substance Painter, so you can custom paint your character's outfits. The first thing we need to do is export our character to Substance Painter. You can choose from a variety of poses you want to use, and then when you've selected one, you can either use the export option directly from the toolbar, or you can go to the option from the file menu. What will happen is your character will be exported in OBJ format. Keep in mind that material names must be unique and cannot contain spaces. In this failed example, we see that there is a duplicated material. The name is default mat, and it has been applied to the bra and underwear bottom objects. So let's go to our scene manager and make sure we have our character selected, then go to the materials section, where you can find the material you're looking for in the material list. Let's just rename these materials in sequential order, so we'll have default mat 1 and 2. When we check for other duplicate material names, we can see that there are a bunch on the earrings as well, so we'll need to repeat the same process by naming them sequentially again. When we're finished, we can go ahead and export. Upon export, you'll see a pop-up that prompts you to click More to download some Character Creator presets for Substance Painter. Clicking on this will take you to the forum, where you'll find more pipeline instructions to complement this tutorial, as well as a download link for the preset file. Download that because you'll need it momentarily. Next, let's take a look at the folder structure from the exported OBJ materials. You can see the textures are all grouped by material, each with its own separate folder. You'll find all the base textures in the standard skin head folder. What you want to do now is load your OBJ into a new project in Substance Painter. Make sure your document resolution is set to 2048 and the normal map format is set to OpenGL. You'll also want to make sure that you enable Activate using a UV Tile workflow and select the Preserve UV Tile Layout per Material and enable Painting Across All Files option. When your OBJ is loaded in, you'll be able to see multiple UV sets under Standard Skin Head in the Texture Set List which indicates that the UDIM data has been successfully imported. You can toggle the visibility to see what areas of your model are affected. Now we're going to look at how to set the UDIM UV set. The first thing I'm doing here is adding a fill layer and I'll just rename it Head. After that's set, I'll click and drag the texture maps from the shelf to their respective sections under that layer. However, you'll see that they will apply to the other parts of the body as well. This is because we need to deselect the irrelevant UVs. To do that, I'm going to go up to the head layer I created and deselect every UV under UV Tile Mask, except for the one that we need. From that point, we basically repeat the process for all of the other UV masks, so we'll do one more for the body. Again, simply create the layer, drag the base color and roughness maps to their respective areas, and then deselect the other UVs. You'll need to repeat this for the head, body, arms, legs, and eyelashes. For the eyelashes, you'll need to import in the opacity texture map as well. The only difference is that the opacity channel is not there by default, so you need to add it separately. You can do this by going up to the texture set settings and manually adding it under channels. Now it will show up under materials once you select it, and you can drag your opacity map over. If you want to see the opacity effect on the viewport, you can go up to Shader Settings and click the shader name PBR Metal Rough, and choose the PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending Shader instead. In order to prevent your character's entire body from looking like an eyelash, you'll need to go back into the eyelash layer and deselect all the other UVs. Once you have all your texture setup done, then you can go ahead and bake the mesh maps. You'll find this option under the Texture Set Settings tab. In this case, we're going to bake all the maps, so I'll be sure to select the normal and ambient occlusion maps as well. From there, you'll want to select which materials you want to create. In this case, we're going to go to the top right drop down menu and check Select All Texture Sets. Then I'm going to select all of the skin materials for my character mesh. In the curvature section, you want to make sure that you generate this from the mesh. An output size of 1024 in this case works, so let's just go ahead and click on the bake selected textures. After the baking is complete, you'll see that our AO map result is less than ideal, so we're going to go ahead and delete that for now. We need mesh maps in Substance because it allows us to use smart masks without the need for a curvature map as you can see here. It can generate one from the mesh map. Next, let's look at painting the textures with UDIM. 
You can toggle the visibility of each layer via the eye icon as you can see here. With the UDIM workflow, you can paint over multiple UV maps simultaneously, which makes things a lot easier on the artist. As you can see here, I'm using this zipper tool to paint all the way from the arm to the leg. Even if I change the visibility of the leg, the zipper effect will still remain. Here I'm taking similar steps by painting with all these alpha tools across multiple UV maps, which is creating masks that we can manipulate later. You can also feel free to paint on the clothing of your character as well. Here I'm using smart masks to add a vibrant purple to certain parts of my character's uniform. You can see that when I do this, it's automatically adding the masks on the appropriate layers. I can do this for all the other clothing items and accessories as well, everything down to the individual earrings. You'll also want to make sure that you add CC presets into Substance Painter. The first thing you'll need to do is download the preset like I mentioned earlier from the description link in our Reillusion forums. Once you have that file, you want to put it in your export preset folder for the Substance application. The default path is shown here, although yours might be different depending on your installation preference. Next, let's export our clothing textures from Substance by going up to the File menu and selecting Export Textures. You'll need to make sure that you have all the required textures selected here. If you put the export preset file in the right place, you should see that pop up in your output template field. We'll save it as a 4K PNG and then select Export. Back in Character Creator, make sure you select the meshes that you want to update the textures on. And then select Update Textures from Substance Painter. Select the source folder for the textures and go from there. That's about all there is to it. After you've updated the textures, you'll have a fantastic looking result like this that you can continually update back and forth with Substance Painter. Due to its superior texture editing tools, the Substance Painter pipeline is a very powerful and useful tool for customizing everything on your character. By making it easier to update with Character Creator, you'll save tons of time and have a lot more options in terms of material customization. That's about all there is for this new update with Character Creator 3.31. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.